we had two tests. We had the re response, the first response, and then we had the PCR, which takes a bit of time. And over the time, as we were doing the mobilization, we were doing the response test kit. Having to test and see, 15, 30 means, what is the sensitivity of the Uganda National Agriculture Extension Week? How is the buy-in? What are the stakeholders? How are they responding? But today, I come here to say that we are actually on a PCR test kit because we are actually confirming the results that all stakeholders are eager, are able to engage and use the energies to harness all that we have in order to have a successful agriculture extension week. It is therefore our sincere hope as the organizers and all our audience, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that we come together and do whatever it takes to have a vibrant and a successful um, National Agriculture Extension Week. Allow me recognize all the UFAS board members present here. Kindly stand up for recognition. I'll request those who have not stood, please, let's give a round of applause to these UFAS board members. These are people who are already engaged in their own different institutions and commit to the association and put in their time so that this association is able to stand, is able to move forward, and is able to host the Uganda National Agriculture Extension Week. We are not um, orphans. We have a father or we have a mother, and that is Afas. I will also want to request all the members of the African Forum for Agriculture Advisory Services, please stand up for recognition. These are our parents. We are not orphans, eh, but the parents are fearing to stand. <laughs> They're not sure. Thank you, because they have held up. They have held our hand up to where we are, and we are still moving as a family. Thank you, Afas, for being there for us. I also take this opportunity to introduce our patron, Madam Mrs. Beatrice Biarugava, whom you all know and love. Yes, in her retirement, we are still tapping on that wisdom that she has already garnered through her experience to be able to flourish and be able to perform and be where we are now. And with the ministry, we have a focal person who was nominated and is on the UFAS board, Dr. Patience Ramigisa. Kindly stand up for recognition. So he is our link. We don't just go anyhow, but he is our link to the ministry. And he has done it very well because the biggest percentage of the participants here are from the ministry. Thank you, Dr. Patience, for that mobilization and that support. I will also want to express our sincere thanks to our advisors. On the board, we have some advising team, and these are headed by AFAS again. These are our advisors, Professor Mangeni, who was not able to come, as well as we have somebody from the ministry who advises us, and that is Madame Koni Achayo. So whenever you see any issues arising protocol-wise, any other communication issues, just know that the advice is from <laughs> Connie. <laughs> also, appreciate with me our development partners. You will appreciate that we are 
in the branded mood, which we couldn't have managed as the association. And allow me to recognize USAID, Feed the Future, ISS activity. All the team players, please stand up for recognition. They have done us proud. Another round of applause for you. Yes, thank you very much. We would not have been in this place if it wasn't for the ISS activity supporting and giving us the guidance that we deserve. Allow me also to recognize another development partner who said, no, this event has to take place. That is none other than Dr. John Jagwe from Agra. A round of applause for him. Thank you, doctor, for being there for us. And we know that even our partnership is not only ending here, but we are moving forward even to the next steps. And all other donors have been there for us. CADAP, XP4, IFAD, European Union, we appreciate. Last but not least, there are people who have been on the ground. These are our foot soldiers, and that is the Secretariat of UFAS. I'll request that they stand up for recognition. And that is Madame Beatrice Luzobe, the CEO, Madame Rose Mugisha, working with the regional coordinators, and Madame Babidier, who is our membership officer. Skovia Lindwe, thank you for all the work that you have done. Allow me also, last but not least, we have always had this partner. This is Sasakawa Africa Association. They have been with us all through the events, even the previous events. They have supported us. They have represented. Uh, they have also had representation on the board. And I want to recognize South, uh, Sasakawa Africa Association director. I don't know whether any staff came with you. Please stand up for recognition. Oh, <laughs> OK. Yes, please extend our gratitude to the team. And uh, we look forward to continuously working with you. So with those remarks, allow me to state, as uh, the facilitators have already mentioned, that we are here to harness whatever we can. Feel free to give that energy. Feel free to participate as much as possible so that we make the Extension Week a success. And I wish, to to I wish you all a fruitful deliberations as we move forward in this launch. Thank you and thank you again. Okay, thank you very much. I've already introduced myself and they have introduced me. I'm going to marathon through this uh, so that we are, we are on. Uh, so, I'm just going to have three, three presentations. I mean, uh, the outline is what is UFAS, overview of the extension week, and the challenges and with, uh, and the challenges. That would be very short. Um, what is UFAS? What is UFAS? Because I, I believe everybody, there are people here who might know a little bit much or a little bit about UFAS. UFAS is a continental fora, but this is the perspective in which it comes in as far as extension fora are concerned. We are a country fora. We are part of the continental fora, which is AFAS, which has been uh, presented, I mean, uh, you've heard about. And the continental fora, which is AFAS, is part of the global forum, which is the GIFRAS, the GIFRAS or Global Forum for Rural Advisory Services. And uh, down here, 
we have over we are part of over 40 country you know fora in the different countries and in and uh, so Wufas is in Uganda and we are trying to establish ourselves regionally through what we call the regional hubs. We already have central, lower east, upper east, north, and we are, I think, at the end of this because the West Nile is actually coming in very powerfully and what we call the upper west. Upper west is the, the Hoima and the Masindi. Uh, and just this is, I've talked about the whole global network. That is, we are part of that network. You can see AFAS is in Africa, but there are many others in the different continents. And uh, the RESCA is part of AFAS. It's just the Frankfurt part. Uh, and what is WUFAS in a glance? It's a National Agriculture Extension and Advisory Services Forum. It was formed in 2011. Uh, for AE, by AES actors. It is the actors who formed it, and we were registered in 2013. So we are a legal entity. Uh, all those who want to deal with us, we are a legal entity, a separate legal entity. And we bring together all the actors from agriculture extension and advisory service from all sectors, as you see them, public, private, CSOs, and all that, from all the fields, whether you are crop, whether you are animal, fisheries, any agriculture and agriculture related field, you are there. And at all levels of professionals, all the way from certificate to PhD. And we have the representation of that membership. And uh, we also work very closely with, I mean, with MAIF through the Directorate of Extension and Advisory Services and, the part and, and other partners to reach out to the AES actors. Um, and I think people have already been introduced. Dr. Dr. Luamegisa is our focal person up there at the ministry and, Dr. and Mr. Mpira down at the local level. Uh, for the membership reach, we have we, you know, because we're a membership organization, we have to have, you know, a membership. And we have over, th I mean, we have 312 paid up members. This was as by registration when we checked. And these are men and women. And we have, among that, we have 32 organizations. Um, and out of, uh, out of the individuals, we have 54% youth. And we, we always say that is a very good challenge, you know? Uh, and uh, I don't know that that can be seen, but the current membership, you can see the distribution. Actually, the highest membership is public. And then we have followed by CSOs, and then followed by the students. Students, you know, we had put them in under academia and everybody was saying, but you have so much academia, what is, you know? So we separated the students, those who are still students, uh, because we don't know what they will become later. And then uh, the academia, research, and all that. So that is our distribution of membership. Uh, however, we have over, the overall reach is bigger than just the 312. Uh, the 312. Uh, Dusty, what is our strategic direction? Our vision is quality AES effectively contributing to agricultural development in Uganda. And we have a mission to promote effective and effe efficient and innovative AES system through part part strategic partnerships, advocacy, capacity building, information sharing, and interaction among the actors in Uganda. And we have five objectives. The first one is to strengthen and sustain the platform itself because it's the one which actually uh, upholds everything. Support information sharing and networking develop the capacity of the of the of the the, cap the capacity of agriculture extension systems enhance professionalism and ethical code of conduct and lobby and advocate for a conducive environment and uh, that is just the spread of i talked about membership and that is the spread of our, member, of our membership. I'm sorry for some of the nuances, maybe which I have not yet put the logos, but that shows 
the spread of the membership of, uh, uh, of woofers in terms of organizations. And lastly, we just in the implementation, we implement through the thematic areas, but also we have the technical working groups, uh, which are shown there, all the way from resource mobilization, climate smart, ICT, and policy and, uh, and advocacy. Now, to the Agriculture Extension Week, which is going to take place on, from 23rd to 26th May, and it's going to be a hybrid event, uh, physical and virtual, and the venue is going to be this one. Actually, we requested that we have the launch here so that we have the feel of the place of our venue. Uh, then, uh, the note that we are having regional workshops, events and workshops at regional level. We have identified nine regions. Uh, most of these actually are almost towards the zones, the, 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 the agriculture zones, from 10th to 30th. There are going to be regional events. But all these are feeding into the, 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 the extension week. Uh, what's the, the background that uh, UFAS, together with the ministry and AFAS and other, act, and other partners, we've been organizing agricultural events since 2013. Since we were formed, we've been organizing this. And these have been bringing together over 200 different actors and stakeholders. Before, of course, there was no virtual, so they would be those ones who would come here would be the ones. And during the 2020, because of the prevailing uh, uh, situation there, we had uh, the first E, an E symposium. We had an E, e event. And this brought over 1,000 people, and we saw a participation of even the other countries. Uh, then, but then, due to the stabilized situation, we have this one. We are calling it a fourth national event, though we are talking about it as the first extension week. And, then, uh, and because it is going for, for a whole week, hence we are changing to a national extension week. And, uh, but I don't know, you may not see this. I said from 13. At first, we had what we called conferences. There, were, there, would, be one, there would be one there. Then we went into the symposia up to 2020. And 2021, we could not organize a national one because we hosted the Africa one. And uh, then now, last year was supposed to have out the value and the contribution of pluralistic extension, agriculture extension and advisory services in building the actors' resilience and competitiveness for agriculture development and national economy in Uganda. And the objectives uh, want to identify and highlight the various sustainable pluralistic extension interventions and approaches that are building actors' resilience to stimulate different participating value chain actors towards greater contribution to actors' resilience and competitiveness, to deliberate on the capacity and operational gaps among the different pluralistic value chain actors. I hope everybody, all of us, we know when we talk about pluralistic. Okay? Uh, if you don't know, you ask the neighbor. To raise the prior, and then prior, raise priority policy and practice recommendations for AES efficiency and effectiveness in building the beneficiaries' resilience and competitiveness. Uh, what are the expected outputs? Sustainable, pluralistic AES ways or interventions and approaches that are building resilience and competitiveness, the capacity and operational gaps among the different actors, and then a policy brief or communique on the AES strategies for addressing the value and the contribution of, of agriculture extension in building actors' resilience. Uh, Sub-themes, we have some themes. The theme is unveiling innovative, pluralistic AES ways and approaches. 
act as resilience and competitiveness for food security and competitiveness. This is being brought, it's bringing in two issues. The issue of pluralism and then the issue of the national goal, which is uh, no, three, actually three of them. Then the issue of resilience and then the national goal, which is competitiveness and commercialized agriculture. The sub-themes, AES interventions and support mechanisms for addressing resilience. The second one is leveraging and strengthening public programs and projects. We want to get to know what are those projects, what are those uh, uh, programs of uh, the, the public programs and projects and you know how are they leveraging, how, are, how can they be strengthened or how are they being uh, uh, strengthened. We hope we are calling upon the, the ministry here. We need someone who can actually come up with a thematic paper on this. Uh, viable business development and support services for farmers, women and youth engagement and opportunities in agricultural value chain, and then the last one is digitalized AES in agriculture, which is a, as a driver of agricultural growth. Those are the sub-themes. And the participation, we are expecting over, not 100 by the way, it's a 1,000 AES actors and stakeholders to be mobilized to attend the physical and online sessions at regional and national levels from within and outside Uganda. Um, and, uh, and this is going to be through the pre-regional workshops, which I've already talked about uh, in April, and then the national events from 23rd to 26th. And this, we expect that these people will either sponsor themselves or they will be sponsored by the organizations or institutions to participate. Uh, now, what is the, uh, some people say roadmap or whatever, but that's what is, that is just an outline of the events roadmap. We have phase one, which is the preparatory and preliminary. Uh, formation of a national organizing committee, prior mobilization of resources, partners and participants, presenters and exhibitors, identification of field sites, media engagement, and the launch of the event, which is uh, today. And the second phase is the regional events, which I've already talked about, uh, which are, are going to be in form of workshops organized by AES actors and champions within the regions. And they are led by the regional subcommittee members. Uh, but we also continue with some activities in this phase of phase one. The, fin the final preparation is the, pa the paper preparations and submissions, the media advice discussions at national level, the, physical, the, the final preparation by the subcommittees. And uh, then the fourth phase is extension week. And this one is going to have plenary sessions uh, with keynote addresses, thematic-based uh, presentations. Each of the, we need a thematic paper on each of them to prepare for the discussion of that theme. The dialogue, we are going to have a dialogue on the current status of agriculture within the extension week. Uh, recently we have found out that with the current situation, there are many actors who have come up. Actually we have three we know now three actors who have come up with position papers, but we want someone to actually come up, synthesize those papers, and we come out with one position as, as actors in, the, in agriculture extension. Workshops, field visits, exhibitions, awarding, um, awarding exemplary AES actors, and of course there will be networking. And we'll end it with a UFAS annual general meeting. And the first, the post event is we'll have the dissemination of the communique and also following up on the commitments. That is how uh, things are going to run. Uh, what did I say? Okay, preparedness. How are we prepared for this? Uh, I talked about the National Organizing Committee, which is in place, and it is, and people are meeting. And uh, sorry for those who are be behind, but those are the, we have the chair. We have the chair, we have the advisors, we have the secretariat, uh, which I said I had, 
But then we have these subcommittees, the technical, the finance, the publicity and mobilization, stroke protocol, regional, and then exhibition award. Uh, exhibition award. I think I've left out, no, those are the ones. So, and then, however, uh, we just put this for a very good because we want to mobilize ourselves. We've actually uh, noticed their fault, but uh, we've lacked the representation, active representation and participation. And we think this is due to the delayed meeting with the permanent secretary to officially delegate the staff. When we usually have this, we always rise to the PS, and the PS officially, officially commits the staff. Uh, but uh, but uh, saying that, we want to thank uh, Connie has been, as advisor on the other side, she has actually been participating. Dr. Ramikisa, I think, has been also uh, coming in into this. But we want an official, you know, coming in. Okay? And uh, I think we'll be able to solve that. Uh, the guest of honor. Uh, preparedness again. Resource, uh, on the resources and participants, we are mobilize, mobilization is going ongoing. It's a continuous one. But we have, we want to say, and we want to thank Feed the Future, you said that the, um, the venue is fully secured. <laughs> so even if we don't have any other, we can just come here and meet and have what to eat and go away. Okay, all the others are additional, but that one is secured, and we want to thank that. Uh, invitations to partners and, particip and part participants is ongoing. Some of you, I'm sure, we have got already the invitation to the extension week. Uh, the different registration fees and side events contribution have been determined like that. Uh, we are going, we had uh, Registration of individuals, exhibition space. We are there are going to be exhibitions, side events, and regional workshop sponsorship. And the, for the regional, we are trying to mobilize the um, the regional partners. But some of the people who are at the national level have been identified as regional partners. So you'll be called upon on that. Uh, on the preparedness, I think lastly on the preparedness, um, call for papers is out. The deadline is 15th. It has been pushed to 15th, uh, 2023. Publicity activities are ongoing. Media engagements and adverts, some of you have seen some of these even on the social media. Materials are being developed. And then the mobilization and support of pre-events workshops is ongoing. Uh, you had uh, Ruth said she's the coordinator. She's coordinating those activities. But Dr. Mpira is also helping us a lot with mobilizing the, 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 the public sector, the, uh, the local government public sector. Uh, field sites have been identified. That we said they said they should be within 80 kilometers radius. Uh, but they are being vetted. And then exhibition guidelines are also being finalized. Awards determined, they have been determined uh, to individuals and organizations. They are going to be individuals and organizations from the seven sectors. As you see them, public, private, uh, CSO, academia, FOs, and media. And I would say that our dinner for the awards Ceremony is also, you know, is also already catered for. And the launch, which is now, we are also taking. Um, oh, sorry. But we have, on the preparedness, we have some gaps in the budget. We have the budget for organization, the event, the organizing committee. Some of these, they spend their money, they are spending their travel. And for one thing, we have not been able to hold, and people want a physical. It has been very difficult for us to hold any physical meeting because of uh, not, being, not having any facilitation for that. We have not been able to go in to have physical, and we would like actually, especially the knock, the, the chairs to come together and say, this is what we are doing and this is what we are. Uh, 
uh, sorry, the facilitation of the event is also not it's a gap for facilitators and rapporteurs. More publicity items, but we want to thank you said Agra and SAA, which have catered for some of these items. The field trips, the awards, and then the sponsorship for the youth. We want youth. We told you that the youth are form 54%. Uh, percent. Some of these are students. And we always want the youth to participate, but they may not be able to sponsor themselves. Um, and then also the mobilization of the public sector. Uh, I'm calling upon the ministry because we, we actually missed the public sector participation in the Africa Extension Week. We don't want to miss it again, you know? Uh, because when these things happen, actually, I've seen in other countries, it is really, you know, because the public sector makes the bulk, okay? Uh, the possible areas of participation. What are the possible areas of participation? Uh, you can actually, uh, some of the organizations have given people to be part of that, uh, the organizing committee, but you can also attend the event uh, yourself, but also sponsor your staff to attend the event. Prepare a uh, paper presentation, organizing side events, we already have organizations which have said they want to, to have side events. Field these sites, uh, and then regional workshop. That you can participate in that way. And what are the areas for possible support? We still need support on sponsoring participants uh, because we are not going to. We don't have. We are not going to sponsor the participants. Uh, sponsoring the budget items for the organizing committee, as I've said, for publicity and for publicity. I said the other organizations have yet have catered for some, but we still have a gap in branding materials. Uh, and then the talk shows for the media, radio and TV. Then field visit, facilitating especially transport. And then uh, the, the, I put this one to recognize that uh, for the hotel cost and live streaming, uh, you said has covered it. Accommodation for the organizing committee. Uh, let me say this, it is a, it's one of the hard thing to, I think to get from the donors and uh, because the reasoning is that the event is in Kampala and all those who are going to be in it are going to be in Kampala. But there is a challenge. I actually, I left office yesterday, because we were planning for this, at around eight. I reached home, I was very tired. I fell on my bed, and by five I was supposed to be up, because I left home at six. And imagine if you are part of, you know, the other big event. It's like you're just going home for a bed. You, you may not even have fruitful meetings. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so after the chief guest has sat, is sitting down, people have been saying only men, but we did it technically because we know what we do. In UFAS, for our partners, we are gender sensitive, <laughs> working with Professor Mangeni over years, we know what, uh, it's, the, what, what it means. Elizabeth, what is that program you talk about for extension? Great, exactly. So last but not least, Ufas has a mother. So for gender sensitivity, don't even talk about it because we could have gotten a male patron. We have our patron, none other than Dr. Beatrice Yarugaba. <laughs> Give her a hand clap. She's uh, a, legend, a legendary extension actor and advocate. Mama, you're welcome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like now for us to go through the session, and I will start with inviting our patron. I'll start with inviting our patron, who will uh, give some remarks, then we'll move to the next and quickly go through the opening session. 
Madam Patron, you're welcome. Thank you, Grace, our chief guest, uh, representing the Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, uh, partners, AFAS, AGRA, USID, and of course, our parent ministry, Minister of Agriculture, and other distinguished uh, participants. Good morning, I think it's still a good morning. I'm happy to be here. I couldn't miss because this event is very key to drum up support from other people to recognize what we do. I want to thank the organizers, the chair, and your team for a very well organized function. And of course, our sponsors, thank you very much for supporting us. I want to thank Beatrice, the CEO of WUFAS, for a very elaborate presentation. It was very insightful. Thanks for thinking through it. You have walked us through what this, first of all, what uh, WUFAS is and its connection to other regional and international bodies, the role that you can play, and you have also told us the challenges. And I want to respond to just a few of them this morning. Uh, Honorable Minister, it is true that the value of our catch extension as a profession has diminished. And this is because everybody thinks that they can do a catch extension. Actually, everybody thinks whether they are a farmer or someone who lives in the village, some, they think that agriculture is easy and everybody can do it. One time I was even talking to Dr. Mugas and I was saying, what do we do? Then he said that someone from higher up, we were saying that our farmers know what to do. That do you need to teach a farmer how to grow cassava? So you can, you know, you can imagine someone at a very high level having that attitude. So they think that our farmers know what to do. They maybe don't need really us as a profession. And that is a very big challenge. During this term, uh, the development, natural development plan of agro-industrialization, the, the phase that we are in now, when they brought the parish development model. I think they were looking where to get money. And they thought that, you know, the agricultural sector is where they should, you know, offload all the money and put it to the parish level. At the parish level, unfortunately, we don't even have a technical person. We don't have staff there who will manage, you know, this activity, but the money is being put there. So when they got stranded, they said, ah, we put it in the circle. So they asked the village, the, the parish, uh, leaders to, to form circles and then they are offloading the money and putting it in the circle. And yet we have local government technical staff who are there now without a budget. So I don't know the circle money, does it have a program? Have you guided them how to use it? Who will supervise and monitor its use? So you can see how, <laughs> Honorable Minister, you are not the government now how we are thinking, so I don't know whether the ministry was consulted, or where this thing came from, but for us we are very concerned that the farmers, we know that the farmers, one of the gaps that we know is that farmers lack knowledge and skill and innovations. That's why the research are there, that's why the universities are there, that's why the ministry is there to give this knowledge. That's why other bodies like AFAS and UFAS are there to ensure that our farmers get knowledge. We have very many challenges especially climate change now. It is now very important that farmers should be really reached and guided on how to be resilient and get out of this mess. But for us as a nation, it is the exact time that we are saying, farmers, you are okay. You can struggle on your own. You know what to do, which is really not true. And now I can say it because I'm not government anymore, so I don't need to protect <laughs> anyone. I say it as it is, 
now I'm a farmer. I've been telling my colleagues in UFAS that now I'm a farmer, although I'm knowledgeable, but I'm still struggling. I need a vet in my sub-county. I call the vet, the place is saying, I'm at the district, we have a meeting. I'm at the sub-county, I'm making a work plan. I'm, so they are ever busy doing administrative work. They are not reaching the, the farmer. They are too thin on the ground to make any impact. Then the government goes around and says, uh, we don't need extension because even those who are there, they are not doing anything. But there are too few to make any impact. So our appeal, one of the key outputs out of this extension week is to really to ask government to give us extension workers. We need them now more than we did. When I was young and at school, in primary, I know that we used to have at the parish level an agricultural assistant with a motorcycle going to all the households. That was in the 70s. And the farming households were few. I think by that time we were about maybe six million people, maybe not more than 14, not more than 10, we were very few. And the farming households were few, but we had extension workers at the parish level. And they were reaching us, they would come to school and teach us how to do gardening. Now that you are very many, about to, I don't know, maybe how many households now, if you can expect, more, more, about six million households. And now we have nobody at the parish level. The number of farming households have increased, but there's no staff at the parish level, we should even be having staff at the village level. The few who are at the sub-county level are overstretched, and they are doing mainly administrative work. For my vet, I even say I have fewer. I will give you an allowance, but they don't have enough time to go around the farms. So if they can fail to come to my household, my farm, how about the other farmers? So they are really too few to make an impact. And then government goes around and says they are useless, they are not doing anything, they have not helped any farmer. But have they gone down to see the extension farmer ratio? How, how, how much is it? How it is overstretched. Have they compared, Honorable Minister and your commissioners, I would like you to compare with other sectors. When you go to education, the schools are at parish level, primary schools, and each school has more than 10 teachers and other support staff. The health center three has more than 10 staff at the sub-county, but for us we have just two if we are lucky to have an agriculture officer and a vet. So they can impact on the community, they can do services which are failed, but for us we are too few. But even those that are few now, you are saying ah, we even don't support them that you are putting money in the circle and you want the farmers now to be on their own because you assume that they know, which is really not, it is very wrong. So our partners, I don't know how you can help us to produce a paper that can show government that they are, the way that they are thinking, the trend that they are following is very wrong. They are doing us a disservice. Now I'm talking even as a farmer who has experienced uh, that challenge. So we actually need the knowledge and one of the key outputs as you launch this activity, Honorable Minister, is that this paper, I do not copy word by word, but whatever the challenges that have been mentioned, let us take them very seriously and, you know, work with them. Our partners, please support us on policy, because this policy must change. We are running the private sector or non-state actors, because we appreciate that government cannot go alone. They cannot do it alone, even all other sectors in the health sector, there's the private hospitals, there are the NGO hospitals, you know, the private sector, non state actors come to work. Even schools, in fact, private schools uh, excel. So I recognize that the government cannot do it all. But you will have an opportunity where we can bring other people on board to help us. But we need an enabling environment. We need that law. We have a policy, but we cannot implement it without the law. So the National Culture Extension Bill, I understand that was presented to cabinet and was given back to the ministry. So I don't know what they asked you to do. Where is it now? Maybe Honorable Minister will tell us, because I'm a member of cabinet, if it has come back, we know. What is it that they want you to improve so that maybe these people, that, you know, the, 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 the partners can help, you know, to, to find it units so that can be acceptable, but it is high time that Parliament gives us this law to enable all other extension workers to work. Recently, I was seeing on the forum, 
Dr. Jole Kabisi was complaining that people in the private sector who have taken that opportunity because there's a gap to come and start, you know, providing services. She was saying that some, some person said that you can raise 50 heifers on one acre by planting napier grass and you feed. And the woman was, <laughs> she was outraged, was saying, you know, who are these, who is allowing these people to say these things? Hmm? You don't allow, because there's a gap, everybody's coming in to say what they want. And they are minting money. And because farmers are hungry for knowledge, so they are paying, but they are paying for the wrong information. So please, that is my appeal as a farmer, as a professional, that please let's do something about agriculture extension services. And this uh, agriculture extension week should give us an opportunity to air all our views and to come up with something concrete. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, doctor. Uh, you can put it down. I think it's going to move around the table. Thank you very much. Director, Dr. Slim Nadi, who loved to be here, but because he has some health issues, he is with us in spirit. Agriculture Extension has gone into a lot of transformation. When I looked at the theme of the Extension Week, uh, the National Extension Week, unveiling innovative extension approaches, I was about to add tools and human beings. The reason I wanted to add human beings is that extension is driven from the heart, not only tools. That's why when you call a vet and he, he, if he hear the heart of saving your chicken or your goat, he would have left the administrative work. At the same time, I want also to say Extension sometimes is challenging because it's also a social science. In pure science where narrow the deputy here in, in, with the, all the respect comes, when he has a breed of a, a crop or, I mean, uh, a variety of a crop, a breed of animal, it is easy to notice when an extension person goes around to make an effort to make somebody uh, make uh, transform, it is also difficult to know whether it is this very person who changed that. So sometimes measuring extension becomes quite difficult, but that effort is important. So we come here to all dialogue about how we can improve extension, but most importantly, to work together. Again, our efforts as AFAS, as UFAS, and other, all the other NGOs is to synergize with the ministry. The, the ministry has a big role to do its work. We could all not be there, but we have to support the ministry because we are all the actors on the ground. Therefore, the little things that we come with, whether money, whether ideas, whether anything, should be able to complement each other and we move together. We're also happy that Uganda, for example, is driven very well with the National Development Plan, which is well-crafted, well-crafted. And you know now the, the, the parish development model is also a, a well-thought document. The most important part is how do we get a niche in order for us to contribute into that? If we had articulated farmers like uh, the patron, I think maybe we would be hard. As Martin Luther said, this world is not going wrong because of the people who are cruel or who are bad. But it is because of the silence of the good people. Maybe the, the farmers, if we empowered them really, because the politicians, the people they vote may hear them. As we may talk, but they say, well, you paid your salary. Why are you talking? Uh, Dr. Miro, you have your pay in Makerere. What are you talking about? Do we close the salary and take the man to the farmers? Then Dr. Miro will say, no. First give me the salary. We'll let the farmers wait. If, if one day we all came, if we all came to this room and said, OK, because the farmers are not getting the services, we are laying down our tools and we don't want a salary, and we are going to the villages to be farmers. Maybe they, they would be hard better, but that's not important. What is important is the complementarities that we do together in order to add the effort of government. 
I want also to thank the ministry very, very much for hosting the 2021 Extension Week, which was led by none than my brother, Dr. Opolot Naklet, as the chair of the organizing committee. That, that Extension Week has gone into the archives of agricultural research and development globally. It was not a Ugandan event, it was a global event. So whenever you go to other parts of the world, it is known that Uganda had a very successful extension week. I find this extension week now by offers as a rejoiner. And as we discuss this extension week, other countries are also doing the same. Some few countries like Malawi and others. But also in this very year, in, in, in a better way of coordination, we have the Africa-wide agriculture extension week, which will take place in, Abuja, in, in Nigeria, Abuja. So this then will inform the continental effort. As we discuss here, the issues which will come from here will not be only the Ugandan issues, but they will be the issues that will want to change the narrative in, in how we deliver extension and advisory services in the continent. And of course, AFAS has had a very good landmark in, in ways of influencing the world. Because AFAS was one of the first networks to be formed. And you, if you walk now through the world, for those of you who can walk, you find there are many other networks that have been formed. So that is a very good effort. And as I wind up, I want only to say that we have come here to learn. But sometimes when we come for this kind of meeting, or even when we are organizing extension week, from an MRE point of view, they will say, after you have held the extension week, so what? If you have held this meeting, so what? How does a farmer eat what you have discussed? How does a human being eat? So, but it's also important that this extension week, would, you would have not met the other person. In the theory of networking, that most of you who have done, Dr. Miro is a, 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 a lecturer of so many. In a theory of networking, you will never get ideas if you stay in your own home. It is only when you come here that you can get a new idea, you get a new partner, you can all work together. And these, these are places that we can forge partnerships that can make us work as institutions, but also as a country. I'm happy to say Sasakawa is here, Agra is here, yeah, Feed the Future, uh, the sponsor of this uh, event is here, and most of you. And you can imagine, this event, for example, has made me to meet my OGs and OBs, whom I had not seen for 20 years. For example, Christabel, for example, Jennifer. These people have been hiding. So when we come also in this, we, we start to catch up. And what does an extension worker need? Sometimes, honorable minister, guest of honor, it is not about the pay. Sometimes it's about the motivation that goes into the heart. As it is very well written and is known, if you can give somebody money, but with a wrong motive, the person will never be happy. Most of you here may be having money, but you may be sleeping when you are not happy. That is not what we need in extension. An extension worker must be fully motivated. And indeed, this, this, this uh, uh, the theme provides that in terms of resilience, in terms of competitiveness, not only in delivery, not only in the production, but as a human being. So if a human being is resilient, that your peers has called you, but you can still work, that your superior has uh, not paid your salary, but you are, you are able to move on, you are motivated. So we need to find also mechanisms of motivating our extension workers. And one of them is as simple as awards. If you give this extension person a phone, a phone like a farm radio international could do, like a mayor, my OB uh, uh, Kaziro would do, you know, that is a class of 2004. If you can give this extension worker a phone, and this extension worker is having a smartphone in the, in the sub-county, he becomes one of those that measure. So those are small motivating 
factors. And we can do them together. It is not only the ministry that can do that. But if we can say, OK, Sasakawa, what can you bring on the table? Uh, Woofers, what can you bring on the table? Care International, what can you bring on the table? Then we say, OK, this is what we have. So how can we start? The challenge in the pluralistic extension is that there is a lot of, there are so many advantages of pluralistic extension. You allow space for people to provide extension, but at the same time, you bring confusion. You know, uh, my, my brother Patience, Dr. Patience, knows that if you open the space, then other people who are not also in the space come. In my village, for example, these days, if you have a party, you will invite people. But I am telling you, 90% of the people will be in that will be uninvited. <laughs> so how do you manage that? There should be some order. There should be a way you say, OK, all of us are important, but then we, let's sit according to how we are supposed to be. Or let's be silent at one point. Let's eat in turns. But if you just say, let's open the space, it will be difficult. Therefore, coordination of national efforts is very important. And that is the role that UFAS can play very well, to bring everybody together so that we can learn from each other. Uh, I know a uh, learning continues. Learning continues. The ministry definitely will learn from another organization. We abide by the regulations that are in the ministry. We can code. So coordination of extension and advisory services is very, very important, right from the national level up to the grassroots. And most importantly, also the farmers. So as I end, I want us to say, as the extension week comes, let's not forget to bring more farmers who will be able to articulate demand issues so that we can hear the story that we, as extension people, should be able to respond. And if we do that, then we shall be talking about demand-driven extension and advisory services. I thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words, and we continue pulling together. Thank you very much, Max. Please feed the future um, institutional strengthening activity. Um, it's a pleasure to be in this room, plus uh, Sasakawa ED. If I've left you out, I'm very sorry. I'm learning these things. My dream is to one day be, be that honorable. So um, this is a nice meeting, and of course, you can't transform agriculture without extension. You can't. As AGRA, we have been very passionate about agricultural transformation. And a little bit of background, AGRA was formed in 2007 by Kofi Annan with this dream to see that why can't Africa be like the other continents, like Asia, where they grow rice and get tons and tons of yield? You know, after he retired, he retired back to his village in Ghana, and there was poverty, there was poverty and low yield. So he was passionate. He felt disappointed that after so many years of working with the UN, um, Africa was still backward. And so when he was frustrated and he formed organization. He called upon people, how can we transform Africa? And, and he got partnerships like the Gates Foundation and all that. But when he started Agra, we thought this transformation was going to come about by just increasing use of seed and fertilizer. Two things. Seed fertilizer, you change the continent, you change its agriculture. However, after 10 years, Things were not still shifting very well. That is why we, we, we stepped back and said, no, it can't just be seed and fertilizer. You need extension. You need soils. You need markets. You need the right policies. You need to mechanize. So we brought we, we broadened our thinking as Agra and we said, OK, we will broaden our interventions as well. So I am thrilled and happy that as we are here discussing extension, I have heard the word 
pluralistic, meaning you can allow in other ideas, other players to enrich the service delivery and to widen its coverage. Um, as Agra, we have piloted one model called the village agent model, which you, you, you have bust and you know very well. And we have seen it work. And I, am, I, I want to commit that we bring one or two people who have been in this model to share their story. They are farmers, they are out there. And you will be inspired. Even me, I'm inspired, you know? How you see someone's life transform in just four years, four years, and they are now from a dropout, school dropout, to now a person, and these are, some of them are women, to now owning input shops, produce stores, and doing big business in four years. That is amazing. I've seen it with my own eyes. So we are glad that UFAS, you've un enabled this platform to happen. We pledge our support. Um, sometimes our support may delay or, or be like that. We also have our own challenges, but we pledge our support. And um, we are happy that UFAS, you're creating for us a platform to exchange ideas to discuss and see how we can transform our agriculture via the extension service delivery angle. So with those few remarks, um, I would like to thank UFAS for this. And let's keep the momentum going. Thank you very much. You know, we, we are talking about advisory services, so they could have been necessary here so that this tool is most relevant you know, to, to all of us. <laughs> uh, dear Chief Guest, uh, the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, uh, here in, uh, represented by the Director of uh, Crop Resources, uh, the leadership of uh, UFAS uh, that is convening us uh, here today, uh, my colleagues, uh, the development partners, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, Anthony Nyungu uh, is my name, and I'm the chief of party uh, for USID Feed the Future Uganda Institutional and Systems uh, Strengthening Activity. As we are all aware, uh, the United States government through USID has a long-term bilateral relationship with the government and the people of Uganda. And the activity that I'm providing leadership on is just one of the many that are receiving support. And the mandate of this activity is to contribute towards a more inclusive agricultural market economy or system by working with actors at the national level uh, that include uh, priority ministries, departments, and agencies, uh, but also the industry, uh, apex organizations of actors in the private sector. We are very active with the Ministry of Agriculture and its agencies, and also the Ministry of Trade and its agencies, and the actors under their respective umbrella associations that include uh, offers. The agriculture sector is faced by many challenges at the moment that have been mentioned by a number of our speakers. And of course, the role of extension workers cannot be taken for granted. Whether you have resources for the inputs, whether you have the research, with all these challenges of food insecurity, you know, we don't have you know, sufficient edible oil on the market, we are talking about productivity, it all goes back to the need for extension services. There is no way we can see the desired change without thinking about the quality of the labor 
that is needed you know, to turn all the inputs into the necessary outcomes and outputs that we would want to see. As part of the mandate for the institutional and systems uh, strengthening activity for which I provide uh, leadership, we are very proud to associate with UFAS services in driving extension policy reforms and policy implementation uh, in the country. Uh, among other priorities, the many priorities that we are working on with the Ministry of Agriculture, we did support the review of the National Catch Extension Strategy, Honorable Minister. Uh, it was uh, validated, and I do believe it is somewhere there. And, and I hope that as we get into the National Catch Extension Week, it can be one of the gifts uh, that the sector can, can be given. And of course, the other uh, priorities that we are working on will continue uh, to fast track those. And in line with, uh, with the mandate that I already shared with you, uh, USID under the Feed the Future Institution and System Strengthening Activity looks at uh, the Agriculture Extension Week, uh, but also partnership with, with, with uh, our office as one that will enable contribution towards creation of space for actors in the agriculture sector to work together on issues affecting them, but also identify solutions to inform further development of the sector, demonstrate innovations in the agriculture space to attract investment, but also dialogue on policy reforms that will enable creation of strong uh, institutions and infrastructure towards a more uh, enabling uh, environment. Among other things that we do is we recognize that no institution is an island and we have to work in a synergized manner. We need to coordinate ourselves and the kind of initiative that uh, UFAS has taken is one that you know, brings us all together as actors in the extension market system to work together and explore uh, common solutions uh, to the challenges that we have. And it's on that that we, we continue to commit as the Feed the Future Institutional and Systems Strengthening Activity to partner with, with UFAS because the strategic aspirations of UFAS are aligned with the mandate of the activity. Dr. Miro did talk about the purpose of this as mobilizing energies for the week. We commit to that, but also move beyond to make commitment to the strategic aspirations of the sector. And we will make a contribution as an activity towards you know, pursuing the desired uh, you know, reforms to, for more enabling environment. I, I therefore call upon um, every one of us here while discussing the thematic areas to identify those institutional capacity gaps, policy reforms, and opportunities required to professionalize extension service delivery. And once those are identified, we will partner with you to make a contribution and walk the journey together. We only make a contribution, but do not take over the mandate of the actors. Your business, your strategic direction is what constitutes what we contribute to as the ISS activity. Let's work together to assess progress. Let's recognize where we make achievements. Quite often when you have many things going on, you may lose track on some of the achievements that have been made. So I look forward to, to us monitoring this together, coming together to dialogue on challenges, but also coming together to celebrate some of the achievements that are being made. I know that a lot has been said about what is lacking, but there is also a lot that government has done. 
when we were you know, convening to review the national extension strategy, it was clear that the number of extension workers had been increased, despite the fact that we need many more. So we will demand, but also at the same time, appreciate what is coming through. So we look forward to working together on, on those frameworks so that we are able to, to monitor the journey uh, that we are on. And of course, let's all be part of, uh, of the forums. Let's all plan to join the National Agriculture Extension Week. And we continue to be committed as the ISS activity to walk the journey with you. And I must say that um, it's not only the ISS activity, but all the other activities that are receiving support from the USID Uganda mission. We at the ISS are at the national level, but you are aware of the other activities that are working at the community level and others that are working at the meso level of the agriculture uh, market system. I'll convey a message from here to my colleagues so that we all join hands together to impact the livelihoods of our farmers down there. I thank you so much and wish you all good deliberation. Thank you. I'm the mention already, it's about the human resource, about the competencies of that human resource, about the information dissemination channels, and then the strength of the farm organization. Are we having that in place? As we say, it's about transferring information, knowledge, and technologies to improve the farmer's livelihoods. What is happening to the farmer today? And as professionals that are for and working in different institutions, what is the reason for our existence? So those are the questions that keep me in a pensive mood always. And of course, today, as we say, there are challenges in extension. And as we say, there can only be one commission of government responsible for a discipline. And so I am responsible for extension. And now coming around with all these challenges when we are not, when everybody is questioning our relevance. But again, colleagues, we have to remember and reflect that even as we go to the extension week, sometimes we have to look back and say, how did we come to where we are today? Honorable Minister, by the time I joined the extension work in the year 2000 as a sub-county agricultural officer, in a sub-county of six parishes, each parish had an assistant agricultural officer. And there was a record in the immediate past that every village had an agricultural assistant. Today, there is one person to man that sub-county. Even when the population has grown, I do not know what was thought in the restructuring. This, what, this one degree holder, maybe when you have a degree, you have uh, a magical way of disseminating information. I have no idea. But that is the challenge. So the first challenge that came to a is restructuring process, the removal of the, uh, the certificate and then reducing, on the diploma, reducing the number of foot soldiers. But of course, with the influence of other external forces. The next challenge came is our attempt with the Max here to privatize extension. And therefore, by privatizing extension, we got them off the government budget. And government was happy. And by that privatization, we also assigned extension workers the roles of uh, being a coordinators and procurement officers. They forgot to be advisors of the farmers. And that habit has stayed. So today, extension workers are happy being coordinators, registering farmers, receiving and distributing inputs, rather than providing the technical advice to the farmer. So as the extension worker is so close to the farmer, the farmer is not feeling the extension worker, because we are doing other responsibilities other than. So, and now, 
the fight that was done by the team in the ministry, including Dr. Remigisa and then the direct emeritus to reestablish the extension system in the ministry amid this resistance from even our development partners, some of them. It, 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 was, it was a big fight. But after achieving that, of course, we have had issues still in trying to maintain that momentum and to sustain the required funding and increase that funding in the government system for extension workers. So we have to keep that in mind when we now discuss and say, then how do we get back to what we want to do? But what is the key that all of us are saying we are in extension? So as we hold the events after event, like Mark said, how do we evaluate the effect of these events? Then what? Does the farmer come into the picture and testify that we have touched his or her life, like Dr. Jagwe was trying to present? And of course, many times, we are the ones who speak about those testimonies. Can we allow the farmers to speak, to testify that indeed they have benefited from us? So often these are in comforting statements to make, but we have to change our narrative and accept that we become responsible for the change or lack of it in terms of transforming the farmer's livelihood. In February, I was in Nairobi for the awards of the Digital Agriculture, Disruptive Agriculture Technologies. And after several very good statements, my closing remark was that, you know, we need the darts to work for the farmer. And for the next meeting we should meet, we should have the farmers forming part of the the jury to say, yes, this technology has worked for us. That whatever we do, we, and we don't have to apportion responsibility, all of us are in this together. If the extension is not working for the farmer, then let's accept that all of us are responsible. And, and when we accept that responsibility, we should all then work together to say, how do we make it work? It's not about government, it's not about non-state, it is all of us. Because we are all in it together to say we have a common mission to transform the lives of the people of this country. So, Honorable Minister, I'm not bitter, but uh, we have to put things into perspective so that we don't just uh, feel good when the situation out there, it is very sad when uh, a farmer has to be buying cassava from the shop. A farmer who has land and increasingly reporting episodes of food insecurity. With all we have done, with all the knowledge we got from the Dr. Miros and with all the research efforts and with all these policy issues we have done, with all the NGOs we have around, what is the problem? We shall have to sit and sincerely discuss that and agree on a practical way forward. So I thank you and I hope that really we work and make the extension week something that comes out with responses to those challenges and we commit to implement them for the good of the farmer and for the development of agriculture. Thank you very much and with those many words, I apologize and wish to invite the Honorable Minister to come and address us and officially launch our journey towards the Agriculture Extension Week. Honorable Minister, you're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Henry Nakaret, for the wonderful presentation and all the colleagues, and please, 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 I am Biantuale Steven, I am not Honorable Frank Atumweva, so sit down. <laughs> Thank you and thanks very much, dear colleagues. 
the executive director for Africa Forum for Agricultural Advisory Services, the board and management of Uganda Forum for Agricultural Advisory Services, our development partners, USAID, so we appreciate all of the support and your presence. Agra, my friend Dr. Jagwe, John, uh, my brother from Sasakawa, we were together again when I was uh, a honorable minister some few weeks back. Uh, and the other development partners appreciated our retired director who has just stepped out and indeed who is a patron and a mother of extension rebirth in Uganda. We appreciate her contribution. My fellow commissioners, Dr. Nakaret, I have seen Dr. Wamigisa, I have seen Mr. Nabongo and uh, uh, Mr. Tsimo Mohanji and the others. The academia, Dr. Miro, you have been appreciated. Our research people, uh, Dr. Kasim Sadiq, whom I saw when he was a young boy, because I am also not very young. Uh, I am one of those who graduated in 1989. So how many of us are here? <laughs> Madame Luzobe and one friend. Uh, our colleagues from local governments, I saw some friends. Yes, you are most welcome. We appreciate your coming. Our other non-state actors, farm organizations, farmers, uh, the media, last but not least, Mr. Musmami. Where is he? That guy has really done us a good job in agriculture. Let us appreciate him. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to start by apologizing. The Honorable Minister is unable to be here, and the Permanent Secretary, he would have loved to be here, but exactly what Dr. Nakaret made reference to is what has made them not be here. Karamoja region. A lot has been happening in the Karamoja region, but the challenges there have not been corrected and sorted. So no other than General Saleh has camped in that region to guide, to help us. And so the Honorable Minister and the, I think our friend has just traveled back. He can testify. The land with all that fertility, we have constructed water sources there. Our people are still dying of hunger because they don't have food. So today, there is a project being launched there, and also there is a big engagement with the leaders in the region, and so the Honorable Minister and the PS have traveled there. So sincere apologies, and uh, let us accept their apologies. Secondly, it really disturbs me also as a person, Biantwale Steveni, Acting Director, Crop Resources and Commissioner Crop Protection. You are saying, my if we have a link. We are supposed to chair, Madam, during your presentation, and where the pre we are chairing, there are dashes. Where is the problem? So my advice, and uh, Dr. Miru, sir, why I say those uh, reflections should even, you may discuss them, you may not, but let us stop talking to each other. Talking at each other. Let us take it to another level. Kindly what comes out of this, work with Dr. Wamigisa, and it is presented to the ministry senior sector management, and it goes also to the top 
policy management of the ministry. So let us package it. I don't know whether it will be a policy brief or whatever you wish to call it. And we invite the UFAS, AFAS, and the other leaders to come and exchange with our leaders. I saw the banner at the entrance of the ministry. And I sit in sector senior management. I had not heard about it. Dr. Guamugisa, you will bear facts with me. I only saw the banner. And yesterday, when it was raining heavily at 2.30 PM, is when I received the assignment that I needed to be here. And I was supposed again to be at the Farmers Leadership Center in Camp Ringsa. So where is the gap? So before I go into the submissions of my honorable minister, really there is something we must do as a team, as a group, and engage our leaders and managers. Otherwise, our issues will not reach where they are supposed to reach. On the issue of the diminished value of extension services, Madam has just stepped out. PDM versus extension and the rest. You see, dear colleagues and friends, the biggest challenge has been doing the same, doing things the same way and expecting different results. So some efforts must be tried to see their changes. So PDM has been introduced to support our 39%. So the issue would be, where is the 61%? And we come in and work with the government on how they can be supported. So let us package this information and it will be discussed, and the cabinet will guide us. On the extension bill, you know there are processes in the government that are ongoing, including revision of the NADS Act, including restructuring of the agencies, popularly called the RAPEX. Therefore, until these processes are complete, this bill and strategy definitely might are being interfered with that process because they must reflect the current thinking which is not yet concluded. So let us conclude these efforts and we revert to the others. But processes should continue, engagements should continue, consultations and the others. Having made those comments, the Honorable Minister is pleased and honored to officiate at the launch of this event uh, of the National Agriculture Extension Week, organized by the Ministry and the partners and other stakeholders. The theme has been elaborated and uh, it is scheduled to take place, as we have seen, between 22nd uh, to 26th May at Kabira Country Club here as earlier elaborated. So this is an opportunity for all extension stakeholders, both the public and the private, to deliberate on the current status of agricultural extension service delivery and come up with effective means to address these challenges. We need to unlock the potential and contribute to the achievement of the Uganda's Vision 2040, the Sustainable Development Goals. So far, what we have implemented in NDP3, and also the Agricultural Value Chain Development Strategy. And we must appreciate that the government has already provided the guidance on six priorities that we must concentrate and deliver in the short and medium term. So all of this requires a strong and coordinated agricultural extension that is appreciated. And the government has made efforts on this to provide a conducive environment. As I have elaborated, the extension bill is still in the process. And when it is finalized, definitely it will be presented 
to cabinet and the parliament for those final approvals. So to achieve transformation, the six priority areas for the short term include research, uh, issues of breeding and stocking materials and associated inputs. That's priority number one, as guided by cabinet on 1st August 2022. The second priority area is on appropriate mechanization and also issues of climate change, including provision of water for agricultural production and irrigation. The other one is on farm education. And when we went to present this, His Excellency the President guided us that we need to call it Okuzuksa. And what does he mean? He was saying that we need to guide our people on Echibaro. What enterprises are our farmers to be engaged in that make economic sense? So we need to mobilize our people and this is the farm education and really in line with the general extension and advisory services. The other priority area of immediate and medium intervention is on control of pests, diseases, and vectors across board in livestock, in crops, and in fisheries. Then the other area number five is on affirmative action for fisheries and aquaculture. And here is in reference to the activities, you know we have been concentrating on capture fisheries, the lakes are being depleted, and therefore our people need to be assisted to go into alternatives. The last one is to seriously address issues of food and feed security for our people and for our livestock. And in response to this currently, there is a process and an effort and intervention that is ongoing where government public institutions with large tracts of land have been facilitated to produce food and feed security crops. And uh, we have started with the government institutions and the next to come on board, we are working on the efforts and the processes to bring on board the private sector. Currently, we are working with the Ministry of Defense and Veteran Affairs, the UPDF, National Enterprise Corporation, National Leadership Center, Changwanzi, and veterans. Dear colleagues, we have veterans in this effort in about 60 districts. But it was very, very, and very touching, Dr. Nakaret, when we went to Bunyangabu. These veteran groups, again, we are saying our extension people are not supporting them. And where is the problem? The UPDF in Kabamba planted three th last season that we are now processing, 3,000 acres of maize. It was my first time to see that type of acreage in this country. But all we are saying, they are doing it without extension. So you know what happens when things are being discussed where we don't reach. So today, we are here to launch the first Uganda. And the other players, sorry, are Nagrik and DB, uh, who are producing uh, pastures and also uh, maize and soya for feed processing. And the NARO has been facilitated to handle issues of seed, both for national, for as breeders, and also for uptake by our people. So today we are here to launch the first Uganda National Agriculture Extension Week. And I wish to call upon all of you here to use this opportunity to come up with innovative approaches that will be resilient and competitive to address the concerns of food security and commercial agriculture along the value chain. I understand that this is an annual event that, and we thank Dr. Nakalet for the successful event we have made reference to. I think we applaud him. This guy.
did a lot during that exercise. Uh, so we need to guide our people and also come up with innovative solutions like utilization of digitalization of extension services. And they are, I think there is some work ongoing. Uh, Dr. Guamigisa the other day presented a report on what he observed during his routine work. So some work is ongoing. Uh, so that our people have viable business development models to address the current challenges in the sector. Today, as we launch the Uganda National Agriculture Extension Week 2023, I call upon all players in extension service provision to close the calm and we work together to have a successful event. At this juncture, I would like also, in a special way, to thank the team that have put together this initial event and who are still progressing in making preparations for the activities in May. You deserve the support and we pledge as government we shall continue coming on board and supporting you. I therefore declare this event officially launched and invite all of us to participate fully and make it a success. I speak all this for and on behalf of Honorable Frank Kajiji Tumwebaze, Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, for God and my country. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Musimamu, you can have your podium back. <laughs> Another applause for the chief guest. Honorable, uh, Honorable Minister, I would request that before you go back to sit, we just go through this session of cutting yeah, and launching. But before you go, I think uh, Afas had uh, an appreciation that they wanted to do. Uh, from the extension week. I think we need to use this quickly. Afas, the signing off. Mm. Emaka. Good, the marker. Can use pen. A ball pen. Yeah. Yes, you can take the chief guest. They do, they don't have. Mm. Yes. So I would request that uh, you hand over. I think you hand over to the. <laughs> they help us. Uh -huh. No, you cut first to unveil. Then after unveiling, I think, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Yes. There is one already, yeah. After unveiling, yes, that is okay. Please hold a bit. You're, you're unveiling the, the first national agriculture, okay. Uh, yes, you are launching. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would request, Honorable Minister, you sign off and then all other partners can come in and sign. Anyone younger could come and hold it a bit up. Oh, but I think Con is there. No, you don't, no, yes, that, oh. Yes. Annette, can you come at the back? I want Madame Coney visible in this instead of making her hold. Yes, I would request our partners to sign off.
Our partners, please sign off. Please pick it from the chief guest and sign off. That is uh, Feed the Future. Please, those who are back there, please give them. Uh -huh. Then we have Agra. Agra. More money. <laughs> Afas, I would request Max, please pick it up from Anthony. He has the marker. Yes. And, and as, uh, yes, Dr. Nakalet, please, you are next. Yes, Dr. Nakalet. Yes. Uh huh. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my chairperson, please come and uh, get in. Naro, Dr. Sadiq, please. Dr. Sadiq comes next. Yes, Mark, please come in. Amea. Amea is here. Yes. Local government. Pira. Yes, I think um, others will join slowly because we have to move to the next session. I may assign, yes. Thank you very much for this session. Please give a hand clap. Now we are going, before we move for the group photo. Uh, Sasakawa, oh, doctor. Doctor, you're missing in action. Uh, yes, what did you say? <laughs> Kaya International, where are you? Kaya International? Kaya, 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 yeah, that is uh, Ben Marks. I'll hand over this after Kaya because we know the reason is whoever is signing is more money. <laughs> oh, I, I hope Kenya does not want to go back. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Kea. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Put it down. I would request that we have Max do the next session quickly. So on our way out, I would request that we, yes. Max. Organizing committee members, I hope you're here. Where are you, organizing committee members and partners? Yes. The chairman of the money. So, Honorable Minister, this is a humble appreciation or that offers, offers and the stakeholders of extension are giving to the ministry for the work well done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, camera, camera people, if you go with the pen, I see you with the phone. Uh, and, and feel free, by the way, to take a picture like I've seen one of you do, because you're going to reflect just about 10 uh, maximum within the 20 minutes as we close, okay? So this is the theme. If you have a phone, please go ahead, uh, take a picture of it, because I'm going to move on to something else. The thing is that we'd like to see what is out there that is innovative, being done by either the public or the private sector, and that has demonstrated resilience, that has demonstrated the competitiveness or profitability uh, when we are in this uh, business of producing food and also uh, commercialized agriculture. So that is going to be our theme. Again, ladies and gentlemen, reflect with me on these sub-themes. We see AES interventions and support mechanisms that are addressing resilience to shocks, climate shocks, COVID-19, locusts. Recently, do we call them price shocks or economic shocks? But you know what, in the middle of all this, AES actors are again being creative. There are models out there that are still assisting farmers to stay afloat. So what are those that you know about that you could even encourage us to connect with? The second one is that we have very many equally well thought out government programs. I would like to be able to leverage on what they are doing and support them to be stronger Again, you can 
tell us, share with us in your reflection, you know, uh, what's out there that we can bring during the extension week uh, to present, to learn from, and to be mindful about also in how we can improve it. Number three, viable business development and support services. As we've seen and heard, all of our farmers now are no longer living just to eat. They must pay school fees. So farming has to bring income to them. And so even extension has to take up business or agribusiness development service provision. Yesterday, we were with our mayor focused on this uh, uh, subject matter. So again, what do you know that is going on in this area? Uh, who can we bring on board? How can you support us to bring this area uh, to the limelight of the public and of all us ac extension actors? The issue of women and youth cannot be underscored. Again, what have you been exposed to? What are you aware of that is going on in this area, uh, especially in their participation in the value chain, not only in production, but also in other uh, uh, nodes of the value chain? Lastly, the issue of digitalized extension. So I wanted us to revisit those sub-themes. And as you, I hope you've taken a picture or noted down on your piece of paper. So with those in mind, we see you contributing to organizing all of these things to come, to, to come out, to be shared, to have a networking around them, to have a sharing of the innovative things that are happening around these themes, but through these processes. So you're going to reflect and inform us how you wish to bring these sub-themes to be visible, to know what's going on, to, to know about the challenges, to know uh, how we can support uh, AES actors involved in these four, five areas uh, uh, of the sub-themes. So either you're going to say, I'm willing even to come to be on the National Planning Committee. Certainly, I'm willing to attend. I'm willing to present a paper. I'm willing to sponsor someone to come and share their story. I'm willing even to organize a side event, either as an agency or as uh, a project or as a government project. I'm willing to even offer a field site visit where these sub-themes, aspects of them are evident. I'm willing also to participate, as you are aware, we're also going to run regional workshops. In fact, those ones are starting in April. I didn't emphasize that, but that's going to happen in April. So you may be willing to join those sub-events, regional workshops, and have the people, the farmers close by and AES actors uh, to come and exchange and come out with key reflections that we can share with government, but also with ourselves. Lastly, you can say, I'm also willing, I've already sponsored, or I know another sponsor who can help you achieve uh, uh, your objectives. So, there on your paper, in view of the theme and the sub-themes, which of these areas are you uh, willing to contribute so you can on your paper, write your name and your organization and write uh, your commitment. After we finish this commitment that you'd like to offer, then I will open up for reflections on what we have been uh, listening to. So I'm giving you just five minutes of personal reflection. What do you know that is going on around these sub-themes? Which actor is out there that you can recommend to us? All of that, you're going to put it on your piece of paper which we shall retrieve and package together, reach out to the people that you've recommended, or maybe up to you in as... Okay. Okay, I've been reminded, yes, beyond... Okay, in the sponsorship, my CEO is reminding me, there are some specific activities that you could sponsor. You could sponsor the organizing committee, publicity, uh, such as branded materials, at bags, t-shirts, notebooks, pens, caps, 
you can sponsor talk shows, radio or television or even the, the web, the internet. You can sponsor space for field visit, including uh, facilitating transport to those field visits and related expenses. You can sponsor facilitators or moderators of this, uh, of the event, the rapporteurs, the presenters. And the messages that have come are relevant, especially the observation on the diminishing value of extension. And that is a true fact. And uh, that basically one of the things that I would have associated to but didn't come clearly is the farmer extension ratio or extension farmer ratio. Today our extension workers are serving, one serving over 1,800 uh, clients and yet the recommended, recommended would be one, maybe 500 and this puts a lot of challenge on extension. And even the observation of the few who are there may not be available. They are so much also involved in planning in the governance matters in the sub-county because the sub-county is a, a government of its own. So the extension worker who is there want to also place that governance activities. So those are some of the challenges that we reflect on there. So this promises that the dialogue, the dialogue that will come out from the end of this activity would be very, very critical. And I'm very happy the promise of uh, the representative of the, 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 the minister that uh, at one time you present all this to our top leadership because it informs directly the need to increase or recruit more extension workers to increase deployment at the various levels. So that was to have a direct talk and it should be followed up. But now when I reflect in relation to these themes, these themes are actually very, very connected to our research efforts. And it makes it very difficult for me to promise which area we are going to participate on. But what I want to say is that my research team should be able to have adequate representation in participation. If resources will allow, also we'll try to communicate through the secretariat if resources will allow. But participation will be there. But also we promise that we have all institutes and the efforts that are being made elsewhere, they can also provide for the field visit, if possible. In the area of digitalization, we have an info hub for NARO, which is digital. And we should be able to learn through either engagement with the, the, the people behind this, or also we are able to bring something. So we, we are going to say that we, and even women and youth enhancement, we have a CGS project, uh, pro project that is actually for youth empowerment. We have efforts for technology incubation and skilling of the youth. So we, we want to see how we are able to feed and contribute to these different thematic areas. We have taken it with my colleague. We have come to from Naro. We have taken it up. And I had a promise with the, who is this moderator here? The moderator who has left? Yes. We had already agreed on a follow-up meeting after here, maybe probably in my office, and we'll be able to communicate what exactly we will be able to do in regard to participation. Thank you. The number of interventions that really um, we can leverage on to be able to move forward. When I look at the theme and the sub-themes, particularly uh, theme number three, we recently launched um, a program, Deliver Women Economic Resilience Through Enterprise and Market Systems, uh, in partnership with Minister of Gender and Minister of Finance. This project is looking at women in business, and particularly in agricultural value chains. And so we are going to be working closely with you to identify these women in groups, skill them up, and ensure that they are benefiting from the businesses through the value chain that they have. And so we launched this program um, uh, recently. It is not yet um, out in the field, and we will benefit uh, a lot from your input. But also, uh, my colleague here, uh, <coughs> Godfrey, is leading a program on scaling up uh, farmer field business schools 
but he's also doing a lot of work, especially in the communities, through the community groups. And so we look forward to really benefiting from the extension services because we have uh, very many groups that we are working with uh, uh, in this country. We are also um, launching a digitalization program. We have uh, a product called the Chomoka. Chomoka is a, pro a product that is helping groups to be able to digitalize their records because lack of records is one of the key areas where our groups are not able to access credit but also any support they need. So Chomoka is going to be helping these groups to digitalize their records and be able to access, have proper linkages with financial service providers to be able to benefit. We also have um, another product called Digital Subwallet that we are working in partnership with, uh, uh, in partnership with Postbank and uh, MTN. This is going to be supporting individual women in business, particularly in agriculture, to be able to have direct relationship with the bank and having their individual wallets that begin with um, formation and uh, discussing about the goal, the kind of goal. What do they want to see in their produce? What does the future look like? And then working with the bank to work that journey. So these are digitalization products. But we also have a digital care package that is meant to create awareness, that is meant to have subsidized mobile phones. Because if you talk about uh, digitalization, the women must get the phones to begin with. And we know that uh, the coverage of uh, mobile phone zero areas is not that big. So we are negotiating with MTN and other service providers to see if we are able to have subsidized, um, easy to use mobile phones by these women, then we are able to um, help them be digitized. And then finally, we know that uh, where there is business and where the family, sometimes if there is no uh, conscientization, issues of GBV will emerge. So we also have a product on uh, uh, community and household dialogues that is meant to ensure that when this income begins to increase, it becomes productive and unifies the family rather than divides it. So we are looking forward to, um, to, the, to the launch. And I would like my colleague to already talk about what we intend to do uh, during this extension week. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And actually, you can even get welcome Thank you, um, Doctor. And just in addition to what uh, my colleague has uh, shared, um, we, 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 we pledge to bring participants from, from the project area to speak to this model. I think I, I, I take it from the conversation that, you know, the farmers should speak and tell their story. So we will bring participants, but also stakeholders that we are working with. We work very closely with the, the local government. So in the areas where we are working, we will um, bring the, the local government officials to be able to um, participate in this. Um, in terms of the activities for that week, we intend to showcase uh, this approach and how it works, this model, and how it works and what it has been able to do. Um, we, have, we submitted an abstract to present a paper on this specific model. So we hope that we can be able to also present a paper during the, the week. Um, we will do posters as well. And we'll have some video clips which we want to run during the, the week. Um, for, for, for the number of activities, the themes, I think this, you know, when, when, when the, 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 the commissioner was speaking, he said, you know, we are in this together. <laughs> so as we are in this together with the government, we are targeting theme num number two, and we see this approach as leveraging on issue government programs. So that's something we hope to do. So we will pay for a side event, and uh, the side event is where we hope to be able to share um, these other things. So this is just the preliminary contribution and what we intend to do um, during that week. Um, we'll also share with our other colleagues, because there are other programs which are, um, are, 
would be interested to be able to participate during this week. So we will be able to engage them, and then we'll come back to you with additional items that will have come out, out of this. So this is what I would like to submit. But I think what I take away from this um, reflection is the question of so what? And you know, how does that farmer what does that farmer say about what we do and what we are engaged in um, doing? So for me, I think that is a very um, important thing in all that we do. How does that farmer reflect what we are, um, efforts we are putting in? Yes, exactly. So thank you. So what's the fear of change? How is this going to better Exactly. All right, uh, Titus again is my name. As I mentioned earlier, I work with PAG, Pentecostal Assemblies of God. That is a church, by the way, you know? Uh, so if I say praise God, don't get worried. Uh, yes, and uh, of course, this is normally a rare space for church to be in, uh, among like the state actors or the non-state actors. But uh, as Pentecostal Assemblies of God, uh, we have a social development services department. Mm -hmm. And uh, this department has several projects in uh, you know, areas that uh, face crisis like floods, droughts, war. So we have three projects that are happening in uh, Kasese for the flood area, the flooding areas. Then Karamoja in Kotido, where there's been a lot of uh, drought and uh, people have been dying. And then in uh, a refugee situation in Arua, that is Terego. Uh, so as the church, of course, uh, there are things that we are passionate about. And uh, even uh, we work together with uh, Church of Uganda, for instance, in Nebi. The, the Nebi Diocese has also been doing several things. Uh, so there are quite uh, several innovations around within the church, actually. And uh, even across other religious uh, organizations. So I think for us as a church, of course, the church used to be very central in uh, development, but shied away. I don't know why. That is why. Uh, but I believe it is getting uh, back on, on its tracks. So going back, uh, I think it would be interesting to chat with uh, my superiors about how to participate in, um, in this kind of thing. Because as the church, they have also been, I think, mostly within their circles. Yeah, but it would be, uh, I think, a good uh, moment to just share how we could get involved because there are several models that are used that could actually be helpful for others to learn from. But also as the uh, uh, board representative for private sector, we are after this meeting we are going to have our private sector working group meeting to just see how probably we could uh, uh, see how to participate as well as private sector during the extension week. So those are just a few remarks that I can make right now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. With my key takeaway, uh, what actually moved me is that uh, I don't remember the gentleman who said that we, after this event, what are the, what are the, what is it that the farmers are going to eat? Like from the discussion, I think you'll get it. That has been my key takeaway and it is so challenging. So that is the most important thing we need to to, to consider. Then uh, I wanted to recommend you some uh, partners. Um, when it comes to theme number one, sub-theme number one, uh, interventions and support mechanisms for addressing resilience and competitiveness. competitiveness. I've, uh, we've worked with uh, Peram for some good time. I think is uh, Peram, you've all, of, all of you have heard about Peram Uganda, participatory ecological land use management. 
when it comes to that sub team number one, they are very good. I think we need to rely on them. And I've written my cheats, all the contacts are here. Then uh, another um, sub team area, I wanted to recommend someone on uh, sub team area three, viable business development and support services. When um, I look at this, I see that uh, agribusiness development center is very good when it comes to this area. And I've recommended ADC. Yeah. My cheat is here. I don't know who's speaking. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, colleagues, take away. You can, uh, you can talk about your learning. You take away. You can talk about your own. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I stand on behalf of AMEA, Agribusiness Market Ecosystem Alliance. And uh, we just um, we have a partnership with uh, with UFAS, and uh, we want to congratulate you on um, on this um, um, very very uh, serious um, approach that you're taking. I mean, throwing extension in the faces of everyone. I mean, th that's what we're supposed to be doing, really. Uh, for AMEA, AMEA is a global network of organisations that work with farm organisations. Uh, uh, we try to bring to create a platform where various organisations, public and private, uh, can be able to come and interact and support uh, the professionalization of, of uh, farm organizations. So we want to partner with, uh, with actors like, uh, like UFAS in this area. So one of the areas we are working to support is in um, business development services. Um, we want to, to support uh, the, the systematic streamlining of the BDS landscape uh, in the agricultural sector across the world. And Uganda, I mean, of course, being home, me, I work in Uganda, so I want to support that entirely. We also have a, a working partnership with the uh, Minister of Agriculture, uh, because they are in this area very well at the directorate, uh, and I'm so glad to see my my mother, <laughs> uh, Connie. Uh, so uh, for us, we will be um, coming in to sponsor a side event, but also um, um, a share on um, on um, uh, sub theme three because that is uh, the area where we are trying to support uh, to partner with UFAS and, and MAIF. Uh, we also um, uh, support a few of our members in Uganda. Uh, we want to to hire an exhibition space, exhibition space, and have one of our members in Uganda. Actually, uh, someone who mentioned ADC, we we had a meeting with them yesterday, um, and um, they will be part of uh, our members who will be showcasing their approaches under our exhibition stall. So uh, there are others that we are still talking to, those who would like to come in and showcase what they have. Uh, then we will pay, and then they get that space to come and, and showcase whatever approaches they're using. Uh, one takeaway that I would like to take very fast is uh, uh, someone mentioned, um, as extensionists, as people who are in this area, if we do not connect very well the relevance of agriculture extension to the livelihoods of the farmers, yeah on a daily basis, then we cannot get people to appreciate the value of extension. So we have to always show everyone that, look, without extension, they won't eat, they won't send children to school, they won't access medical care, and there will be no taxes in the country. So as simple as that. And to me, that is really something that is very nice we should be taking forward. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. We celebrate this partnership with AMEA and the of uh, digitalized agricultural uh, services. Uh, this is where we have also established right now, there's a project which has established uh, 12 platforms across the country, which is uh, which uh, different stakeholders are using to, to pass on information related to regenerative agriculture. So these platforms are open for all different actors who are present here as well. We could be able to see how you can use these platforms to reach farmers with different uh, agricultural practices that you are doing. Uh, but also theme four is also we work mainly also with women and youth, which is also part of our work. We, we are a very strong gender sensitive organization. Uh, my takeaway is still also on issues to do with uh, food for the farmers through them accessing information uh, through either radio or ICTs in different areas. So we are trying to embrace uh, the digitalization because of the dot-com era now, which is coming on board, and availability of phones and internet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you can hear the takeaways are really focused on how do we make a case that what we are doing leads to more food. And but again, thank you so much. The planning and then the regional workshop. Uh, uh, please, uh, uh, Gerard, uh, 
Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, for me, I am really excited about this discussion. And as one of, of the professional agriculture extension service providers, because that's what I studied at the university for four years, I, I, I live more energized knowing that at one day, my profession is going to be professionalized and I am going to be recognized just like the lawyers, the engineers, and I will be happy to associate and know that I really belong to a professional organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, so, Madam Chairperson, <laughs> what uh, Sorry, I'm also going to just say thank you, a big thank you. I appreciate you coming and being with us up to this time. I'm not supposed to be saying anything after Connie has said, has, uh, has wrapped up, but I just know that I live here feeling hopeful. Okay, I am leaving this place feeling, uh, feeling. Uh, uh, now, what is the word? I'm trying to make one, but fe feeling in anticipation, actually. Yeah. Feeling expectant, that's better English for Nazareth, for us who went to church school. So I'm leaving this space feeling expectant. Uh, okay, I, I, I leave this launch feeling more enthusiastic now. Yes, I'm leaving this launch feeling much more excited and expecting wonderful uh, deliberations in the week. Thank you so much. Uh, as I leave this meeting, my first job is to continue mobilizing the local governments so that they can join and we be part of the Agriculture Extension Week and also to really work hard in my region with my Zadi so that we can have also the one day workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much, appreciate that. One more person. Madam Beatrice uh, and the, the medium men also. I'm leaving this place feeling that I'm not alone. Uh, before it was like, you know, we're preaching, but that we, there is everybody, there are many more people who are going to join this struggle we are in. So I'm excited actually. Well, I'm leaving this place satisfied. Knowing that they've. Uh, they've Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mero. Afas, Ufas, all partners present and protocol observed. Media team, thank you. Thank you very much. I think we've had a very beautiful morning to date. But before I say anything, allow me also to register my disappointment. It's been a very beautiful day to this moment. We are working on extension week, preparing for extension week. My commissioners and my colleagues are not here. I have one person, but I expected my head of department to be here to this moment because this is his baby. And I didn't expect... Yes, I didn't expect them to leave while we are discussing extension week and what we should do. And this is supposed to be the baby to carry. So I'm not sorry to say I'm disappointed this moment. We need to give priority where priority is supposed to be. I shouldn't be standing here this moment to close. While, for example, we had the acting director, the commissioner, and the others. So that's why I'm feeling sad this minute. And yet we had wonderful discussions and, you know. So I hope we shall do better next time. I have uh, Commissioner Jennifer around, though. But yes, thank you. I really want to appreciate her for sitting to this moment. 
she has persisted and at least she, she didn't have the idea to live here. I shared my disappointment with her and uh, next time really I hope we do better. But all in all, I want to appreciate all of us who have sat into this moment to appreciate the beautiful thing we are doing. Today we only announced, we only made announcement that we are going to have extension week. But I think your selection of the people who came here has been wonderful. Thank you very much. We have had a little bit of what we shall be hearing on that day. A little bit of it. And I know more will come. We want this type of talking to come out when the real policy guys are around, when the political heads are around. We shouldn't be talking to ourselves because if we continue with ourselves like this, we will not change anything. For us, we are in, in it already. So we need those who will make the difference in what we are talking about to be present and we should be able to open up to them really totally without fear or favor. We had the way the former director was talking here. And that is what we need. We need to talk without fear, you know, fear or favor so that people can hear and we are able to make the difference in the extension system. We need to change it. I was told sometimes back that if we ignore extension, then we lose about 60% of our production. But if we put efforts into extension, then the farmer is able to benefit that about 60%. So we should be able to let them know that without extension, we'll not be able to do what we are supposed to do. So today we are only announcing, and after now, after now, everybody should be an advocate to go and tell the others so that they can tell the others that extension week will be in May. And extension week is an annual event. For us, what we are going to do as a ministry, uh, the guest of honor said, I just saw the, 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 the signpost by the, by the gate and I don't know what is happening. We are going to make it a point that we inform the ministry again and again, since this is the beginning, it has officially been launched, so we have to talk about it officially from our Monday meetings. Actually, the gift which has been given, we shall hand it over officially on Monday during our senior management meeting. So we, we hand it over and then we make an announcement that extension week will be in May. So I think that's just the right thing to do. And probably another thing we'll also have to do is to make the minister go to the media center at uh, some time when we are about to get there and continue making pronouncements. We have already done the launch, but then the announcements and the other activities can go on just like we'll be having radio, TV, talk shows and the rest. So we'll ensure that the minister also goes to the media center and tells all the, you know, they'll announce to the country that extension week will be maybe the following week or at that appropriate time when we will have uh, agreed uh, agreed when it should be. I only want to thank everybody, the partners, you've done wonders and I'm glad you brought them on board. Please, let's continue looking for more partners. We still don't have the resources. The district well, had only two people. We need more districts to come on board. So I think we'll work together with your team and to make sure that uh, actually she's the right person to handle that. It is in her area actually to ensure that uh, the district local government come to participate. I don't know it's going to be tricky on our sides. At least most times we used to say, use the extension grant. We are beginning to feel guilty. We cannot even say use extension grant because the extension grant is being pulled out. So to our partners present, if available, maybe we can pick on one or two district production coordinators to come and be part of it. But please, I'll beg that please bring Jennifer Niara. This, uh, she's the assistant commissioner in, 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 uh, in charge of skilling. So that is skills management. So that is what she needs to do to ensure that our production team participate fully in what we're undertaking. Allow me to thank you. I understand uh, lunch cooled down a long time ago. I don't even know whether it's there or from wherever it is, but I'm grateful that you've allowed me to come and close this. May all of us go back feeling excited, feeling informed, feeling everything that we mentioned. At least there was no confusion here, so that I'm happy. At least there was no disappointment here, for that too I'm happy. So you are all advocates. Let go, let's go and advocate for the forthcoming Agriculture Extension Week, which will be from 22nd to 26th of May. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. I saw this for God and my country. <laughs>